everyone. Uh, my name's Becca, and this is... I'm Shara. Uh, we're two owners of Forga Vibes Gift Shop, located in Mefford in Somerville, Massachusetts. Um, for the next two weeks, or three weeks actually, we'll be uh, doing live videos or videos that we'll post on Facebook, teaching you step-by-step -step virtual workshops. Um, a lot of these workshops, will you can just join in with materials you have around your house. Some of the workshops, you may need to buy kits from us, which we have here um, and you can buy them online for curb pickup as of now um, so yeah we'll we'll walk you through each activity um, and then we'll post the videos afterwards so you can catch up and you can message us any questions going forward the videos will we're gonna try to make them live so you'll be able to ask questions um, as we go so today is a reusable t-shirt um, tote bag so all you need is some scissors a marker and a t-shirt <laughs> and you'll be able to make tons of these you can give them to friends they're great for beach bags um, yes can I use any t-shirt any t-shirt what about a tank top tank tops you can use but they're not as sturdy um, so you if you're gonna be using a tank top you should be using it for something light not your book bags um, but these are great for really anything beach bags easy to there you can flip them in and out after shake the sand out um, they're great for produce because you can wash the bags. You can throw them in the washer and dryer as they're just a t-shirt. Um, you can use them for books or sweaty clothes from sports, whatever it is. Um, they're great. So, like I said, all you need is scissors, markers, and a t-shirt. And I'm just going to reposition myself. And you can find a schedule of all the activities we're going to be doing on our Facebook page. Um, all the workshop, virtual workshops are free. Uh, we do have a tip and donate button um, link linked to the video if you would like to do that as well. Um, so, so right now you're setting up, Becca, what, what are you setting up exactly? I am just setting up my t-shirt. And we're going to go over, there's a couple different ways you can make t-shirt bags. Um, so I brought a couple different shirts so I can show you what I mean. So for example, this shirt has writing on the front. After I make my bag, I still want my bag to show mermaid off duty. Uh, this shirt is just all tie dye. So there's no writing on it. So if you have writing on your t-shirt and you want it to show on your bag, meaning it, for it to be on the front of your bag, right now what you're going to do is you're gonna flip your t-shirt inside out. What if there's writing on the back? Same that then? same thing, yep. Okay. So you're going to flip your t-shirt inside out so that the writing is on the inside. If it's a shirt like this and it has no writing, you do not have to flip it inside out. You can if you would like, but you don't have to. Okay. So once you have it flipped inside out, you want to try to get everything on the shirt lined up, meaning the front and the back, um, the sleeves lined up as best as you can and the bottom lined up the best you can. Okay, so all the seams should be yep, matched up. Yep, all the seams up. should be matched up. Okay, I can do this. So all Everyone can do this. Everyone will okay. be able to do this. Adults, feel free to join in. Have a, and yeah. So for the kids out there and the adults or anyone who's joining in, I have not done this before. I have seen my sister do this, but I have not personally done this. So since we can't be live, I'm gonna try to ask the basic questions that some of us would probably be asking the first time we do this. So uh, to help out with the situation. All right, so I already cut the sleeves off of this shirt. So I am going to do this fun t-shirt. Flip it inside out. All right, so my shirt is inside out, lining up all the seams the best you can. All right, so the first thing we are going to do, and you do not have to use a marker if you don't want to, but if you're if you have a marker, that's great. We're going to be cutting off our sleeves, and where our shoulders are on our shirt is now going to be the straps of your tote bag so what we're going to do you might have to angle yeah, the I was gonna angle it down phone down yeah all right 
So what we're gonna do is, you want the strap to be kind of thick because you don't want it to thin out over time and tear on you. So we're gonna do about three, four fingers. If you have smaller fingers, then use more than four fingers. Um, and we're gonna kind of so do. <laughs> if you have more than five fingers, that's awesome. The dots are just for my, to see where the straight, kind of where I'm going to be cutting. You can kind of place them wherever you would like, but what, we're gonna be cutting at an angle and we're gonna be cutting our whole sleeve off. And this is going to be our strap from here to here. Okay, so I put my fingers here. Yep. Okay, and now I'm gonna go along my hand a little bit. Yep. And make dotted lines. Exactly. Okay, so then when I get like halfway down where I'm not at my hand anymore, I start going towards yep. the outside of the shirt. Right below your armpit. Okay, cool. Something like that. And you're gonna do that to both sides. Try to get them um, as similar as possible so your bag's not a little wonky. So again, whatever you did for fingers here. <laughs> wonky, what a wonky. word. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever. Maybe I'm thinking of Willy Wonka for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Yep. I hope you're styling with the green, even though you yep. might not be in school. I wore my shamrock uh, leggings for all of you today, and Becca has her Lucky charm shirt on. I, I love Lucky Charms. So again, whatever you did to this side, whatever amount of fingers you did here, you're going to do the same thing on this side, which I did about four fingers. Um, I did four fingers. Sarah also did four fingers. I don't have the biggest fingers, so... You can use a ruler to do this too. Um, It'd be about two inches out from the collar, depending on how big your shirt is. Obviously some of you guys are probably smaller than us, so if that's the case, then maybe an inch or an inch and a half out from the collar. All right, so if you need help with scissors, make sure to ask your parents to help you. You are cutting through two layers of cloth, so it might be a little hard. Um, if you have, Try to cut it as clean as you can, but we'll go back after and trim anything that needs to be trimmed. So again, you're cutting through both layers of your shirt, and now we're gonna be cutting the dotted lines. You might need to go a little bit to the right of the lines to make sure the lines don't show on your bag. Um, Kids, make sure to be safe. Don't cut towards your hand, okay? Notice how Becca has her hands over here. Don't put your hands in front of the scissors. Yep. All right, so my entire sleeve is now off on one side. This is also the same way you make a muscle shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I just realized I cut through one of my words. So will these dots show on my bag? They will show on your bag if you use Sharpie. Um, so on this side, none of my dots show. On this side, a lot of my dots show, which is perfectly okay. So if that happens, just try to do another. Like cut through? Yep. Okay. Go back through and cut them. If you use a mar washable marker, then it doesn't matter. Uh, once you get good at this, you won't really have to use marker. Um, you'll just kind of be able to eye it out. If I'm turning my bag inside out because I had words on it, mm -hmm. will it show? Well, it'll be on okay. the inside of your bag. Okay. How'd you guys think I did? Can you see it? All, All right, right, let's hold it up again. So, no sleeves. No sleeves. Sun's Cut them up. both off. Sun's All up. right. <laughs> yep. All right, so next part. We're gonna try to line our shirts back up, mainly at the bottom. So earlier I mentioned there's a couple different ways to make these t-shirts. Um, I'm gonna be kind of showing you guys the easier way, but there's, I'll talk about the other ways as well in a minute. So now we're gonna be working on the bottom of our shirt. So if you are, if you want your bag to be longer and deeper, you're not going to cut as high up on here. If you want your bag to be a little smaller and not go as long on you, then you're going to cut longer straps. 
So what I usually do, and again, if you have a ruler, um, you can use that at this part as well. What I usually do is, I'm using a guy shirt, so my bag's gonna be a little bigger. If you have a men's shirt, your bag will come out bigger. Um, how much would you call that? Like three inches? Three inches. So I'm gonna go about three inches up on my bag. Again, you can go one inch, you could go two inch. The higher up on it you go on your bag, um, the shorter your bag will become. But I would say if you're using a kid's shirt, maybe go up just an inch or two inches. So um, if I measure with using my fingers, my index finger is about that length, okay? So if you wanna take your pointer finger and put it on your shirt and then see how far you go up and draw the line right there okay so put your finger at the bottom of the shirt and then where your finger lies put it right there okay so i'm gonna mark that on my shirt right now and again there's really no wrong way of doing this um you'll learn while doing it that it depends where you put your lines on how deep your bag's gonna be. Okay. I think that's gonna be too bad. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm really cold, so I just turned on the heater. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing my lines across again. So you're just gonna do dotted lines about all the way across your shirt. You can do as many dots as you need. Um, So, just like that, I have dots going all the way across my shirt. And now, again, we're going to be cutting through two layers of our shirt, and we're going to be making strips going all the way across our shirt. So on this shirt, I started to do the strips to show you guys what they'll look like. So just like this. And I'll show you how to do it in a second. Yeah, maybe push that back. So, they're just like that. So, you want these to be about two fingers, um, about an inch on how big you want your strips to be. And I'm going to start cutting them. Um, so, I cut a strip up to each one of my black lines want to angle it down a little for me and I'm cutting through both sides of the shirt do you have any questions Sarah so you're cutting so you're cutting up until this line? Yep, and up until the line. you're cutting up until this line again? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I want my strips to be about half an inch. Uh, the strip size doesn't totally matter. The more strips you cut, the more strips you'll have to tie. And it'll make your bag a little stronger um, than if you just have a couple strips. And then, the ones that are on the ends, see how that's one big one? We're gonna cut it. So it becomes two bigger ones. And we're gonna do that to this side as well. All right, so I'm gonna give everyone a minute or two to do that. Again, ask your parents if you need help cutting to help you cut. So right now, this is what my bag looks like. It has no sleeves, or what my t-shirt looks like. It's not a bag yet. It has no sleeves, and then there's a bunch of little tassel riffles. I don't really know what to call them. <laughs> hanging at the bottom. And mine is not done yet. I'm catching up. So 
if you're like me and you take your time on this. Yeah, how about you side here and keep showing yeah. how to do it. If you're like me, I was always that kid in school that would be the last to finish on a test because I just take longer. So if you're like me, that's okay. We have time to catch up now. So as you can see, I'm just cutting the scissors just like Becca was doing it. I'm just cutting them up to the lines. Uh, you might not be able to see my lines as much because I'm not using a white shirt. So they're a little darker and harder to see. So uh, Becca, what do I do again once I cut all of them? You said something about the ends being right. big. So because our ends are connected like that, She's just going to cut it right down where the seam is mm. so it will no longer be okay. connected. So where the shirt folds yep. over. Where the shirt folds over, you're going to do the same thing to this side if you need to. You might not need to. Why wouldn't I need to? Um, Yours is already pretty thin, so uh, we would still be able to. Okay. But I would do it anyways because they all match up with one that you're going to be tying them to. So if you can't see this end, mine's really thin. So that's why Becca just told me that. But I'm still going to cut it just so they end up matching up. Okay, so now I have my shirt too. We both got our little hanging tassel-like lens on the bottom. <laughs> little party. Doesn't it look like a little dance party? Anyways, <laughs> okay. Let Becca teach again. All right, so if you need a little more time to cut, feel free to pause the video. Um, and now, it's time for tying. So your shirt is still inside out. You now have cut your sleeves off and you have now made all these little fun tassels that Sarah said is like a little party um, <laughs> on the bottom of your shirt. So now we're gonna try. You may not have lifted your shirt up, which would be smart because your tassels would still be lined up. <laughs> I shook my shirt like crazy, so I now need to line up my tassels again. I hope some of you had fun shaking up. You can yours shake your too, shirt. You can make your tassels have a little party if you want. But fun sometimes requires a little more work, but that's okay because we have time, right? And if anyone has ideas on what you would like to see us teach the next couple of weeks, we do have a schedule out, but we are open to recommendations, and we are trying to make all of our classes. Um, virtual classes be about an hour long so we can add more than one activity onto some of those days. Um, like we mentioned earlier, these lit videos will hopefully be live going forward. Um, we had some technical difficulties today, but going forward, hopefully at 11 o'clock, if you go onto Four Good Vibes Facebook page, you'll be able to watch these videos live. So what are we doing now? Right now, I am still lining up my tassels. Um, and then we're going to be tying. So what we're going to do is we cut through the front and the back of our shirt. So each tassel should be kind of lined up. I'm going to call them tassels. I don't really know what to call them. But um, we're going to line up each one, which they should kind of already be laying on top of one another. So let's move from left to right. So left, and then we're going to go right. So what we're going to do is each tassel is lined up. So you're going to take each one that is lined up together and we're going to be tying them together just like a normal knot double knot it so normal knot and then double knot it so for anyone who's struggling with making a knot um, you take your two pieces just like when you tie your shoes okay so you have your two pieces you cross them over and then you put it underneath in the little loop okay so that's one knot and now I'm gonna do it again Cross them over, there's a little hole under, under, underneath, put it through, and then pull it there. So I have a few little knots going on over here. This is my bottom. And your, your bottom may look a little different than us. If you didn't cut your strips as long as we did, you might not have as much of these kind of hanging around like that, um, which is fine. Uh, so you're going to do this all the way across. You're going to tie each one together. So one and one, and then tie a knot. Um, so double knot them to make your bag more sturdier. If you have a lot 
left over like I do on my bag, I'm probably going to go back afterwards and do a third knot. Um, which will make my bag even sturdier. This bag would be perfect for a book bag. Um, so you're going to do this all the way down. I'm so excited. We're getting close to the end, right? Pretty close, yep. And these bags, there's so many different things you can do with them. So we're just making a generic one. But if you really get into this, uh, you can get some actual tassels that are pretty and colorful and attach them to the bottom of your bag. You could get pom-poms and attach them to the bottom of your bag. My favorite thing about these bags is that you can always throw them in the washer and in the dryer. So as long as your sh the shirt can originally go in the dryer. Could you put beads on them? Yeah, you could put beads. Um, huh. You can even bead them here right now before even tying them That's pretty cool. together. Um, this makes a good Mother's Day gift. <laughs> it's a good gift you can give to one of your friends too. Yep. You can also get like a blank white t-shirt and you can color it with fabric marker and turn that into a bag. Ooh, um, like tie-dye it tie-dye I do have this tie-dye shirt um on like the last week of school I know a lot of you like to sign each other's shirts and then you don't know what to do with the shirt afterwards or you don't want the sharpie to eventually come off that's a great one to make these bags Ooh, maybe you can ask your teachers when we all go back to school if uh if you can make some bags for the last day of school to sign that'd be cool yeah that would I'd be love cool. that so again you're just tying each tassel all the way across and we do the same for the end one, too? I'm yep. my last one. Wow, okay. you were fast. You double knotted all of them? Yeah. I made a cactus pillow the other day, and I learned how to do this a little bit, this technique. This is similar to what you do in the pizza pillows. All right. So, again, we're just doing this all the way across. So I you're, finished you're tying. Not done, but I finished yes. tying all of mine. So this is what my bottom looks like. And I just finished tying all mine. So this is what my bottom looks like. So it should be tied that if I put my hand through the front, which don't do this because it'll mess up your lining, but I can't get my hand out now. Okay. And that makes a good point. So if you do put your hands in there, you may see a few holes like mine. So what we would do at that point, which is actually the next step, which Sarah was unaware of because she hasn't done this before. So see, I have, I really only have about one, which is right here. So I'm going to take the tassels that were next to each other and now tie those together, double knot. Which if you're working with a smaller shirt, you probably won't have bonnet holes at the bottom. Um, so that's really my only one. If you know you're going to be using this bag for a lot of produce, apples, oranges, or book bag, you can do this anyways. Tie all the ones that are next to each other. It'll just make it a lot stronger. Um, and you can do that all the way across if you want to. Alright, that was the next step. Now, some people like to keep their bags just like this because they like the tassels to show at the bottom. So this is how their bag would look. Let's put stuff in it so you guys can see. Ooh, all right, let's see. Let's see if my bag can hold a juice box. It can. Let's see if it can hold two juice boxes. All right, let's add two more so then there'll be three. It does. Uh, yeah, what else can we secure. add, Sarah? Um, let's, let's add, add a, a pizza pillow. Oh, I want to add a book. Oh, yeah, let's go grab one of Mel's books. All right, my pizza pillow. It holds it. Becky, you think you can hold a heavy dog man book? All right, let's see. Sarah wants to add a book to mine. All right, so we got this dog man book. If you guys know, it's a chapter book, so it's a little heavier. Let's see. It holds it. Wow. 
All right, awesome. so before we keep adding more, which we will do, I'm gonna take all that fun stuff out. And I'm gonna show you guys what my actual bag was.